soldering iron on, check, Poundland Solar Light. Actually, this is a £2 version. You get a lot more for your £2. And uh, let's do a very retro thing. Let's swap an LED in a solar light because this one, as is traditional, comes with those awful cold white LEDs. And I was thinking, what colour of LED can I put in? I thought I could put in blue or green or better still, I can put in both. So here's the plan. I'm going to take the original straw hat LED, the white one, cold white, with its positive side, negative side, I'm going to take it out. In its place, I'm going to put a blue LED, not and a green LED, not necessarily in that order. Positive side, negative side, positive side, negative side, and I'm going to actually bridge a positive lead to a negative lead and sew them together and then reshape the other leads so that they go down in place of the original LED. And the end result is two LEDs, a blue and a green one in series, which will both light on the solar light, and that will give a sort of it, not just a turquoise light, but because this is the crackled glass effect, it's going to give sort of a sort of sparkly blue and green effect. Hopefully, I think that's what's going to happen. So let's open this up and see what's inside. Let's peel this rubber seal off. This is kind of modular. It's got this silicony rubber seal. It's got the housing here. It's got a very ungenerous 100 milliamp hour double A cell, which will do, you know, it's, it's all that's needed in this for the... Although, you know, I think that could be upgraded because that's a fairly generous solar panel. The solar panel is well glued in with uh, hot melt glue. And this looks like it's uh, pressed in and latched into this. It doesn't look like the metal has been crimped around it. It looks like that's been pre-crimped and then this has been snapped in. And I'd also like to cover the top of this to stop water going in down into that because this little dish the solar panel sits in uh, is sealed. There's no place for the water to get out. And when water gets down the side, it will tend to cause accelerated DC ele electrolytic corrosion. So what I'm going to do, I'll put a bit of the ultraviolet proof tape over the top of that. The ultraviolet proof tape, which has lasted okay, but it has perforated in bits, I noticed, with some of the older lights. So that's uh, worth checking out. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of blue tack, well, white tack actually, on top of here, and I'm going to bend the leads. Let's uh, zoom down in this a wee bit so you can see what's happening. So in this case, I'm going to bend the negative leads sideways. And I'm going to bend a positive, the long lead, sideways. Then I'm going to crop those down. Let's uh, hold them together and see how much I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to leave each one probably about four millimetres long, which is just over uh, an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to crop them like this. Then I'm going to press one into the white tack and then the other into the white tack up quite close. And I'm going to solder them. And the further you have them apart, the more distinct the sparkling effect is going to be because it's going to be... If they were really close together, it would just probably match in the sort of the crackle, the re reflection or lensing effect it gave. But if I put them a wee bit apart, that should hopefully accentuate that effect and give a more distinctive multicolour sparkle. But the overall illumination will probably be a turquoisey colour. Cyan. So I'm melting those two together. Melt it with the solder. Give it a second to cool down. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to bend those leads in there. I'm going to also, just uh, since uh, it's not going to be easy to tell which is the longest, I'm just going to put a wee touch of red Sharpie on the positive lead, just as a reminder. And then I'm going to fold these in and angle them down. And that's me ready to put that into the circuit board now. Just nudge that a little bit. Nudge and tweak right here. Let's get the original LED out. So to get the original LED out, I'm going to note which side is the positive. They've sleeved the positive side there. So I'm going to put a wee red dot on the back of the circuit board. I'm 
I'm going to have to uh, zoom out a wee bit here because otherwise I'm going to go completely off shot too often as I probably already have done. And I'm going to reflow some solder onto those. Actually, you know, I'll put the red dot at the side of the circuit board, not on the solder, because that does make sense because I'm about to remove the solder. Uh, I'm going to wet the solder first with the solder iron and some new solder. And then I'm going to heat both those solder connections at once and then just pull the LED out. And this is where it'd be quite handy. Can I have this sit? Uh, hold on, let's uh, what's the best way to do this? Tell you what, I shall tip this upside down. I shall put this seal back on and I shall sit it into the base here. And then I'm going to use the desoldering pump to try and suck that solder out. One, two, perfect. And now I'm going to get my replacement LED. Now I could use this as a spacer. I'm not sure how well that would work. I may have to crop it down a little bit. I don't think I really need it as a spacer. I think I may just rough it. Rough. So where's my positive? My positive is at that side. Pop it in like that. Yeah, just sit it down so it's just barely sticking out like that. That looks pretty good. Excuse my stomach's making bubbling noises. Yeah, maybe I should have had some food tonight. I've completely forgot. As happens, I got engrossed in a project. So uh, are those still square? Yes, they are. It doesn't really matter. I can squish them about anyway. And that should be it. So theoretically now, if I turn that on, I'll just crop these leads because I'm very confident. If I turn that on and cover the solar panel, both those LEDs should light up. They're not. I've screwed up. Okay, one moment. Have I popped a wire off then? Have I got the polarity correct? Oh, you know, I've not got the polarity correct. What a... What a dig. Right, okay. Here's what to do when you get the polarity wrong. Oops. Uh, let's make sure this is turned off. Right, I'm going to have to suck that solder out again because I screwed up. It's very easy to do. Particularly when you're distracted by rumbling tummies. So out comes that again. Hopefully I've not nooked the LEDs. I don't think I will have. The open circuit voltage of these things can get quite high. Uh, not in a sort of dangerous way, but it's... Uh, I think the little uh, four pin chips do clip the voltage to a degree to stop it going too high. So uh, let's try again. The positive is there. Let's see if I can put it in the right way around this time. That would be really good. How did I manage to do that last time? I can be such an amateur at times. Right, let's try this again. One soda joint, two soda joints. Shall we uh, see if I get luckier this time? So I'll just aim them off a wee bit, turn it on, cover the solar panel, and both the blue and the green are lighting. Excellent, that's what I want. Let's reassemble this. So I don't think it goes around any particular way. Put the two screws, oh, you know what? Before I do this, there's another thing I'm gonna do. See the uh, switch here? The switches often corrode. They're just very cheap and nasty switches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge the switch out. And that means it's not going to be able to be turned off again now. But I don't care. So I'm going to flood solder on and bridge those two connections. And that is on permanently so the switch can rust as much as it likes. It ain't going to do anything. Let's shoot that wee rogue solder ball I put in there out. Okay, okay. And we'll reassemble this. I don't think it goes around any particular way here. Is that it? No, it's not. Yes, yeah, there it is. Pop a screw in. 
and the other screw. And let's make this waterproof now, or as best as waterproof as we can make it. So, and to do that, I'm going to put this uh, ceiling ring over. Now, notice this ceiling ring that is supposed to seal against the glass. It's kind of a bit seamy at the edge. That's not really going to make it very waterproof, but not to worry. We shall improvise. So I'll put this into the container like this and get a bit of handy kitchen towel and give that a real good clean. Technically speaking, I should clean it with solvent, but I'm not going to. You know, I really should clean it with solvent, shouldn't I? But I'm not going to. This should do. And I'm going to get some of this uh, outdoor tape. This is a uh, waterproof garden tape. Let's uh, zoom out a bit. And this is designed for repairing greenhouses uh, if the windows get broken and things like that. Basically stick them together. Or those poly tunnels, those sort of cloche type things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel a bit off and cut it with scissors. And it's just the right size, I think, to sit over that if I'm very careful about putting it on. I've already left a huge fingerprint in it. Okay. Oh, my stomach really is bubbling. I really should go and have something to eat. It doesn't seem to understand there are more important things in eating, like making uh, coloured garden lights. I'm just going to leave that tape all on. It doesn't really matter. It's not too visible. So I'm going to press that down thoroughly to seal. That's it. Uh, you can see where some of the adhesive has stuck onto the cell. It doesn't really matter. And now let's take the let's turn the solder iron off. Let's take the exposure off. Let's turn the light off and see how it looks. Oh, that is really nice. That, can you see the patterns it's projecting? That is really attractive. Hold on, let's uh, get a bit of paper here. I've got a bit of white paper that I can do. This should do it. And sit it on top. And I uh, turn that light off as well so you can really see it. That is very visual, isn't it? It really does look really bright. Uh, the camera is seeing it pretty much as bright as I'm seeing it here. That's really nice, isn't it? It's a lovely shattering of the colour. So that's a very worthy modification. Brace yourself, the light's going on again. I shall move this paper out of the way. It's actually a letter from someone, so I don't want to, even if it is upside down, I don't want to give all their details away. But, uh, yeah, so that's uh, a very easy modification to do to these. Take out the single LED, put two in series of two different colours. It could be red, blue, it could be warm white, cold white if you wanted, or even just two of the same colour. And uh, it creates more of a sort of visual effect through this stuff. But the blue and the green is really attractive because uh, they're just, they complement each other well. It's a really nice colour combination. And because I've soldered across this switch now, it's not going to have that corrosion issue. Okay, everything else may corrode, but not the switch. I'd say that's a good result. 